first big breakouts was beating Black Twins with Duck Hunt at the Let's Make Big Moves, uh, one of the first ones of those. And now she's established herself as a regional threat constantly on the New York PR, but now it's time to break that ceiling and continue to break these ceilings and no better way to practice her very deep pockets than in <laughs> Squad Strike. It's crazy to think, right, that Duck Hunt main has a pocket rob, right? It has the oh pocket God. top tiers. Usually it's the other way and around, right? like pocket all of them. She's like, <laughs> she has a pocket bayonet of herself and has won locals with it. Like, she's crazy. Hey, here we go, though, starting out. Amaryllis just going to get charged up on the other side of the stage. Amaryllis uh, also static partners with Harsnow, who also plays uh, Robin, yes. Robin. So this actually works out really well. You get really kind of the, the doubles partners here. But honestly, Fawn starting off. This is what she does really best. She gets set up, and then it's kind of hard to get out of this corner here. You can tell Amaryllis taking their time to kind of get that way. But still, now, we're just going to kind of go back and forth with some of these projectile trades. Yeah, the, one of the fun things about having, like, a lot of these uh, trapper kind of characters is watching to see how their setups interact with each other. Like, what inter how does st stuff block other stuff in the same way? Because it's all going to be colliding in the middle of the stage, and we get to see how the reward kind of comes together. And generally speaking, this Levin Sword is going to be very, very potent all of the time you have it. We're starting to get into this uh, up air danger zone as well. I feel like a lot of people sleep on how strong Duck Hunt Ariel is as well. Still, Amaryllis going to get thrown into the can, and that's going to be first stop going on over to Fawn here. And she's going to be able to hold on to the Duck Hunt, hold on to the main for a little bit. And honestly, versus Peach 2, how do you get in without a turn up? Uh, you got to first pluck a turn up, and finally Amarillo is choosing to go for that option. You have the time. Duck Hunt, one of Duck Hunt's key weaknesses is the fact that everything takes a little bit of time to set up. But once you are set up, things get really, really dangerous. Oh, the cheeky counter there. I love that there. I think that hitbox is a lot bigger than what people suspect. Sometimes the up smash, they're not going to be able to take it. So now Amarillo's trying to get Fawn's first character out of here. And it's crazy to think how Fawn is putting her main first. A lot yeah. of times people love to put that in the anchor. But now here we go. Still getting set up. There's the first up air. Looking for the second with good DI out by Amarillo's. Still getting that can set up. And great air dodges out. And oh my goodness, I'm really surprised Fawn did not punish that Peach Bomber yeah, on stage. That's what I mean. Duck Hunt takes takes a little bit of uh, takes a little bit of time to go forward. So if you're already buffering something else, things can get like you can get caught sweeping with some of these things. But that's where a frame one can can really be accessible at just every time. These counters are coming in pretty clutch, <laughs> but they're getting Amaryllis out of danger instead of actually causing threats to Fawn. As once again, they seem to just slip right by. Extreme percents on both ends, yet Fawn is no worse for wear. Finally, that dash attack. Yeah, dash attack coming in with a ton of rage and honestly looking really good. Winky face. Unfortunately, though, you're starting out with such a deficit against Diddy Kong as well. There's the forward air. Yeah. That peach is gone gone away, but here comes the Bayonetta here. Getting a little bit of remnants from uh, Smash 4, if you will. A little bit. I mean, we're getting get, we're definitely getting to see the final cherry on the tree here for Amaryllis as Ooh. he's... Oh my god! Oh, hello <laughs> there. That's, that's just some that's classic banana combos. And it's 30%, but it feels like it should be more. It always feels good, too, right? <laughs> that too, I, yeah. I always say when smart. players get their combos here, but finding the forward smash right through the barrels here, Amaryllis has done an amazing job of coming back, but can they hold on to this as now Rob is out here and Rob Bayonetta has been a matchup that people have hated for a long time in yeah, this game. Yeah, suddenly this has turned into quite literally the best case scenario for Amaryllis. You are on your main against one of your opponent's tertiaries which is a plus two matchup. Still now. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I mean, it's working out that way. Gets the reverse, but still, Amaryllis, the onslaught of aerials. Sometimes with Rob being a little bit bigger, it's getting a little bit more difficult. Fawn still stuck off stage. Can't catch the gyro. That's the air dodge gone here. And now Fawn trying to desperately make it back. Going to not be able to find the Nair either. Amaryllis stacking on so much damage right now. But now Ubel, it's looking a little bit scary for both of them as Fawn is able to get back on stage and check out the gameplay that Fawn has shifted to. These frame six witch switch out of shields have been a thorn in Fawn's side for a lot of the typical Rob stuff. So now we're seeing her play much more grounded, finding these grabs, finding these down tilts, 
Imagine jumping when all you can do is press this offense while sticking on the ground and having shield accessible. So scary. I think Fawn was going for a hard read, but there's the witch time. There's the forward smash. And my goodness, what a comeback for Amaryllis. Talk about it, Ubal. We need to see that again. We need to see that again. We need to see that again. Let me see that replay on the final stock there. Thank you, production. Check this position out, right? This is everything that a Rob main wants to do, right? Gyro at ledge, a back air that consumes quite literally all of this space. Ign <laughs> ignore my drawing. But, but Rob, back air is huge, what right? What is that? <laughs> it's, it's a cone. It's, it's the boy. <laughs> and what it, does all of this build up to? It builds up to a really impenetrable ledge trap from a position where you're considering the normal options. But Bayonetta is anything but normal and just has a perfect option for this. And not only for the gyro ledge trap, for the back air, for the down totes, like all of this is stuff that Rob likes to do by presenting buttons you can't uh, easily whiff punish. Meanwhile, your Fawn is presenting these standard ledge traps while Amaryllis is able to play around it with an option he's yet to pick the entire time. Like right. such good at holding these in your pockets and holding these different opportunities until it is right at the very end, as we're seeing actually a character swap. From both of them. Yeah. Yeah, Peach is out of here. It's <laughs> just gone. Uh, so excited to see Amaryllis play Zelda. Of course, my personal favorite. But I think we might be getting a tax swap here. Maybe just deciding against characters. Totally OK. We saw Fawn pick Snake. Now, I dare say that I think Snake is kind of a uh, oddity here in Tri-State. I don't feel like we have like the super strongest snake players that attend very regularly, yeah, right? Not anymore. More. There used yeah. there was a time. There was a 2019 yeah. time where there was like four of them. Yep. And now there's exactly one. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, well, I guess there was five and now there's two because Bobo is a hot snake from Westchester. New York. Westchester. Westchester, yes. yes. Uh, but now but in Jersey it's just Ram. All right, so we're going to see Fawn potentially going back to Snake here, going to the Wii Fit Trainer. I feel like we're seeing just projectile-heavy characters on both sides, which is kind of interesting here. I think Zelda is definitely the, the starter, right? Because if you yeah. can get some mileage with Zelda, you can immediately switch up the playstyle and then kind of go back to that ledge, throw out all the moves that people hate, the the Phantom, the, the Din's Fire. But now we're thinking about Wario here. And you were talking about this earlier, right, Ubal? I mean, Fawn's pockets, they are They're so deep. Big. Oh my their big pockets and like all of these so if you watch waypoint warriors on wednesdays uh, tuesdays tuesdays excuse me tuesdays <laughs> at waypoint cafe uh it is just fawn experimenting yep and that's that's what happens and then she runs into numbers and feels bad but the <laughs> don't we all <laughs> you're right <laughs> but that's the like that is her training ground for all of these characters and you can see her work on every single one of them but Amaryllis is sticking to a, a group of four, but sticking to the Robin as the lead because the Robin absolutely worked yeah. while Fawn shifting over to the Diddy so that way she can keep the Duck Hunt for uh, as an answer for that Bayonetta. Yeah, I think it's smart to throw the anchor in the back if it doesn't work, right? But so far, it looks like Amaryllis is getting started with a lot of the aerials that they were getting a little bit earlier in game one, too. There's the back air into the dash attack and forward air, double forward air from Fawn. Definitely looking like the beginning of game one, right? Very, very close in the first characters. But the thing is, the thing about Robin is that you don't really know what to look out for. Robin is very tricky with the shield damage, all of the setups, etc. But there's the banana trip into the forward air. My goodness, what a way to start it out if you're Amaryllis. I mean, especially given the answer of the previous game, now you get to ride that momentum a little bit, right, Lyric? Like you're seeing, and you get to see like these characters that are much more exploitable to Robin's natural kit. And any single one of these 11 aerials, like that 11 neutral air, just is, becomes so punishing. Yes, triple spot dodge. Yes, yes. It works. <laughs> it's one of those times where you see it, and it's like, yeah, OK, but it worked, though. Arcfire is going to connect, trying to follow up with 11 in the up air, will instead find the forward air. And now it's Fawn having to land here, will find the falling back air, though. Nikita going to fall down, not going to hit Amaryllis. But Amaryllis has been doing a fantastic job of getting out a lot of these snake traps that people hate, and also getting some of the health back with the Nosferatu as well, it's all smart. So Nosferatu has four charges, uh, I believe, on one single book. Ooh! The charge on the down smash! What a absolute... This is Robin to a T and at her finest. 
looking amazing here from Amaros. And we, again, like it's just so many of these characters, so many of these like low high tiers or high mid tiers, whatever you want to put them on the official tier list. Every single character has something in this game. And Robin has amazing, amazing damage and pressure when she gets you stationary. Unfortunately, she also has that little caveat and everything taking charges. But now you get Zelda up against a projectile character. Feels good. You can always choose, though. The thing is about this matchup is that Dunk Hunt has a ton of capabilities to juggle. The thing is, though, Amarilla is already playing a little bit more aggressive, wants to get some of these kicks out. But let's see how much damage they can stack up. Going to kick the Sheriff away, but oh still getting the sweet spot lightning onto Vaughn here. Vaughn, though, going to fight their way out of the corner here. There's the forward throw. Can is still active, but now this is the Fawn zone, right? How do you get out when Fawn covers both the platform and the stage? Phantom set up, though, going to try and play it aggressive, but Can always coming in to save the day where he, they need it. Yeah, man, Amarillo is really playing holding forward against this duck gun as, oh, and it's working. The Wi-Fi strats are coming into clutch with that L to straight to center and then changing up the phantom timings to make sure that she's establishing the ledge trap up against this duck hunt. Ooh, I think if that up air had hit, it might have been it, but still, Amarillo's getting sweet spots left and right, whether it be on Fawn, whether it be on the Sheriff, but you're getting a little bit too crazy. I think that was Amarillo's attempt to go for a uh, potential teleport cancel, yeah. but the thing is, Zelda's kind of a sitting duck, and speaking of duck, that's gonna be the last time we see Fawn. Wow, having it end like that so quickly, like I believe that was Can just bouncing off. Let me get a, get a little peek at it. Yeah, okay, wait, this is actually pretty, pretty cool from Amarillas, because one of the best things about Bayonetta is her ability to linger off stage, and Duck Hunt has a pretty exploitable recovery. So just by going off here, you play into every scenario. Like, check, so this explosion, which is, you know, nice and big, is the fact that you play into Duck Hunt's only escape option, which is that can. Frame right. one. Feels great. It's amazing. But it always hits you if your opponent is close enough. And that trade, every single time, is in your favor in this position thanks to the low damage. And Duck Hunt can't take many of those in order to try and break through and hold on for your life. She needed to be on stage, and Amarillo's first thing on their mind was never letting them back on stage. Absolutely. That will be Amaryllis seed 31 going into winner semis. Guaranteed. Tri-State tri got some deep pockets, Yeah, Tri-State tri <laughs> has a whole. I mean, as we check out some of the highlights from this set, this is a really awesome showcase for both players, I think. And once mm. again, deep oh. pockets, great mid-tier knowledge as well. It so was the damage from the forward air yeah. landing in order to break the shield with that charge down smash. Genius. It was just preparation and the power of Levin's sword. Like. The power of friendship, if you yes. will. We love to see it. <laughs> Regardless, though, we will be seeing Amaryllis in winter semis here at Collision 2023 yeah. for Squad Strike. And I gotta say, this next match is going to be very interesting because we got some knowledge for you. If you guys don't know who's coming up next, we have Spargo, who we just saw, yeah, going up against someone named Tyler. This is